Local support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV. Hi! We're the 6th grade class of Arcadia Local School, home of the Redskins. Welcome to News 6! Hi, I'm Mike Sparks from Arcadia Elementary. Welcome to News 6. With today's first story, here's Nick Bowes. Arcadia 6th graders recently learned a few lessons about a unique bird. Ralph Patterson flies home the story. They have feathers and they are birds, but they don't fly. What are they? What is the emu? An emu is a large bird, about six foot tall. They weigh around 120 to 150 pounds. And they're a member of the ratite family. And um, a close relative is the ostrich and rheas. How do you take care of them? The main thing is, is that you have a, a nice clean bedding for them and a nice building. And um, we give them plenty of fresh water each day. And um, they eat star dog feed, which is an 18% dog feed. And um, it's bought right here in the Van Loo area. And um, it's uh, pretty much a simple care for them. How can you tell the difference between a male and a female? The male has a very um, deep drumming noise. It's a consecutive drumming noise, kind of like a, uh, a drum roll. And the female just kind of is like a thump, thump. Them. And it's, it's like a bass drum just being hit at a nice rhythm and um, a, the color and then also the size. I wonder how big the eggs are. Well, the eggs are pretty good size. They weigh about a pound and a half and they range from a light, lighter dark green color to a very dark green which is like a, almost a black color. And it um, takes about 53 days to hatch depending on your temperature in your incubator. They have to have plenty of moisture also. Can I ride one of them? Oh, definitely not. The emus are not the type of bird that you can ride. They're not like the ostrich. They're just smaller and their backs are not as um, strong as um, what the ostriches are. And they're just an uh, ornamental bird and uh, just something to have around the farm. Today's News 6 is produced by the 6th grade class of Arcadia Elementary. Arcadia is located about 15 miles northeast of Finley. It was founded in 1834 and has a population of 750. Our second story takes Kirk Harhoff into Arcadia Elementary's own backyard to look at the Skulls Arboretum. Arcadia School has its own living natural history museum. What is an arboretum? Technically, an arboretum is a collection of trees, but it's much more than that. It's an area for scientific research to be carried on, it's a wildlife habitat area, and it's an education center. How did it get started? The Arboretum in Arcadia was started in 1988 when I was awarded a Krista McCullough Fellowship by the federal government. The students and I used those funds to design the overall plan of the Arboretum. Since that time, we have had much student input into the planning and much community support in the terms of planning, work, and contributions. What kind of things are in an Arboretum? What's unique about the Arcadia Arboretum is that we have mainly native species. We, when we are finished, will have the only collection of native trees that are marked, native wildflowers, native grasses, and native ferns. So our major emphasis is on native plants of this part of Ohio. There will be other things in the garden, like 
a Shakespeare garden, an herb garden. What are the goals for the Arboretum? The major goal of the Arboretum is to put the students of Arcadia in touch with their natural history heritage. Another major goal of the Arboretum is to get students involved in real research, such as the sixth grade project where they are planting marigolds and learning how marigolds are natural uh, repellents of insects. This week's Kids View question asked the sixth graders to be travelers and visit other countries. Hi, I'm Josh Kyle, reporting for News 6. Today's Kids View question is, if you could visit any country in the world, which one would it be and why? I'd like to visit Ethiopia because I'd like to meet some of the hungry and starving people there and try to help them. I'd like to go to Japan because I'd like to experience the culture and see the style of their houses. I would like to visit Haiti because my best pen pal's there. Our last story takes a peek into the past as New Six visits Jody Anderson and her salt box house. Living in a new old salt box house has Jody and Jim Anderson recreating history. This house is beautiful. How is it built? The house was built about three years ago after many, many, many years of studying, looking at history books, um, going back through old magazines. Um, we copied the plans, the exterior of the house, from the house that John Quincy Adams was born in many, many years ago. How did the salt box home help conserve energy? Um, when these houses were built many, many years ago, they were built so that the cat slide, or that long sloping part of the roof, was facing the southwest. And when the wind would come, there would be no windows for um, the wind to get through, and it would go right up the roof. And the other part um, that is characteristic of a salt box house is the, the massive central fireplace and chimney. The fireplace warms from the center part out. The chair that I'm sitting in is considered a wing-back chair. The wind would be blowing all the way around you, but the wings from the wing chair would be protecting you and keeping you cozy. Could you tell us about some of the unusual things we might find in your house? Some of the unique things, we'll say, um, are the shaker pegs that we have. We try to use them the same way that they were used many, many years ago by the shakers. And the pegs were... Uh, lined up all throughout the house from window to door all the way around about five or six feet up off the floor. I've tried to keep the same thing. I have quilts hanging from mine and, and as well as baskets and, and even a child's chair that we do use. We take it off the peg to use it when their four-year-old eats dinner. I have some shaker boxes, quite a few shaker boxes. I have a first aid kit in one, I have coupons in another one, I have nails to hang my picture spine in another one, but they're wonderful things to use to hide your everyday necessities. Why did you choose to build a house like this? From the time I was 15 years old, salt box homes just seemed to talk to me. I would, I would see one and I would just stare at it. I, I was so intrigued by its shape and, and I always wondered about the history and everything and, and it, was just the, it was just my dream house. That's all for this week's show. Tune in next time when Wapakoneta Middle School visits New Six. Local support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV.